In this video, I'm going to tell you how to clone your iPod so that you can preserve the information that's on it and all of the settings and any kind of playlist or any kind of customizations that you may have. Before I go into those procedures, I just want to give you some background information as to why I am doing this. It's not because of piracy, it's not because I'm sharing songs. It's because simply I've become so dependent on this little guy that I don't want anything bad to happen to it and I want to preserve not only this unit but the information and the settings that are on it. I have also acquired a, another iPod that's the same specification as this one except it's black and I want to make a actually a physical clone of this guy. The reason why I want to clone the iPod is simply because I've become so dependent on it and mainly because the music that I have was not acquired through iTunes. It's mostly ethnic music from the Caribbean and from India. Um, a lot of my music I've ripped from vinyl records from the 70s and 60s even. A lot of the music I've ripped from cassette tapes from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, so a lot of this information is one-off kind of stuff that I have, and uh, it's not easily acquired. It would take me an extremely long amount of time, maybe I couldn't do it at all if I wanted to, to find the source information, the source music and audio files that are on this guy. Also, if you know iTunes, you know that iTunes kind of uh, encrypts your songs once you rip it onto the iPod. It gives it some random letters and stuff. So when you go to find the music again on the iPod, the physical hard drive that's here, it's kind of hard to find. It's kind of hard to organize. And as you know, um, if you buy music through iTunes, it automatically organizes your music through uh, genre and the album name, album art, you know, different categories. If you're ripping music from, you know, wave files, uh, through vinyl, through cassettes or whatever, it gets a little bit hairy and a little bit unorganized to say the least when you import the music into iTunes. Things get kind of jumbled up, or at least it did for me. And in order to circumvent that issue, I manually made playlists. And the playlists are essentially the albums. So as you can see, these are actually the playlists. And you have a bunch of Bollywood crap and, you know, a bunch of stuff. And a lot of these I have the CDs for that I've ripped. And some other stuff I've ripped from vinyl and whatever. Vinyl was actually very popular in Jamaica. I listened to a lot of reggae up until you know the early 2000s so I've been ripping music through analog means for quite some time now so what's important is that I want to essentially take a snapshot of what's on this hard drive for preservation and you know make sure uh, I have some kind of insurance just in case this thing goes kaputski I tried using Norton Ghost and other kind of cloning software it just did not work and then there's also third-party solutions for taking music off of the iPod. Um, you can also uh, view your music files through looking at invisible files uh, in Windows or in uh, Linux, but it's still not going to have the same structure and organization that I have built here. So at this point, I'm going to tell you how to pull everything off of this iPod and then uh, for my own use I'm going to put everything onto a new iPod I acquired. So what you do essentially uh, first you're going to disable automatic uh, starting in iTunes so disable that. You don't want to plug in your iPod and then iTunes automatically starts. Just disable that. The next thing is uh, plug in your iPod that you know the source iPod into uh, Windows or Linux you could do it in Mac it, it gets a little bit uh, confusing in Mac but you can do it in Mac as well next thing is uh, if you're in Windows 
Make sure that you can see invisible files in Windows Explorer. I'm going to leave a, um, a link in the description on how to do that so that you can see all of the hidden files in your iPod. Then somewhere on your computer just make a folder or a directory, a backup of the iPod and you can call it whatever you want. Next go into the iPod and uh, essentially just highlight everything that's in there. Highlight everything, right click, press copy, go into the new directory you made and just paste everything in there. It's going to take hours. I got 40 gigs of information on this. It's going to take hours. Just let it sit. Make sure none of your uh, sleep uh, settings are on your computer. Just let it do what it got to do. Don't use the computer. Just let it sit and do what it has. And that's it. That's your source information. That's, that's your backup. So in my case, as I mentioned, I'm going to be cloning this iPod over to this new one I have. It's actually cracked open. I'm doing maintenance on it. The next step would be to eject your old iPod. Make sure it's safe and sound. Nothing is going to happen to it. It's good to go. In my case, what I did was open up iTunes and reinitialized the new iPod so that I had a blank new clean surface to work on, new canvas. Next, you'll want to close out iTunes, close it out, and then go into the hard drive of the new iPod, highlight everything, and delete everything. Then open up iTunes. iTunes will give you an error saying, hey, everything is uh, messed up with your hard drive. Just close that out. Your iPod is still intact. It, it shouldn't, you know, uh, give you any other errors. The next thing I did was name the new iPod the same name as the old iPod. So if this is called End User iPod, this one will also be named End User iPod. Then go ahead, close out iTunes. Do not eject the iPod, of course. Go into your backup directory, highlight everything, press copy, and then go into the new iPod and paste everything. It's going to take a couple hours to do that, depending on how much stuff you have. Just leave it. Let it sit. After you're done doing that, open up iTunes. And everything should be the same as your old iPod. You should have a one-for-one -one clone. All the playlists should be good to go. Everything should be the same. And that's it. You should have a clone of your iPod. Now in my case I have a problem with this new iPod. Uh, the earphone is broken. It's only playing through one side. And I'm also pondering doing some upgrades to it such as uh, increased hard drive capacity, maybe changing the battery, um, still thinking about what I want to do. I found a relatively easier way of cracking one of these guys open. It's a modified uh, thing I did. Uh, originally I discovered it on YouTube. They say if you press the back of this it will cause the, uh, the silver uh, backing to pucker. And at that point you could stick a spudger in there and just spudge around it and get it open. So what I did was, uh, you can do this on a mouse pad on a flat surface, is uh, I have this plastic uh, SD card uh, container here. Put that there, put this guy on top, and then press down. And it'll cause it to pucker, and at least you'll have uh, one hand free to use either a spudger. In my case, I use some jeweler uh, screwdrivers here. These are flat-headed. And uh, just get it cracked open and then stick one of these in flat boom stick it in and then the next thing you want to do this is important is kind of finagle this out of here because this will cause you some problems in the long run the thing can slip off the table or whatever just get that out and then uh, just try to finesse these other uh, jeweler uh, screwdrivers in there and then pretty soon you should have it cracked open you don't have to go around the perimeter of this. You just got to work one side, this right side here, and uh, you should get it open. Now when you get it open, don't yank it up immediately. Just open it a tiny little bit, just a little tiny bit there. I'll tell you why. There's a header 
in the corner here and I believe the battery uh, cable is connected to it so just crack it open a little bit and then get a jeweler's uh, screwdriver or something and pop that open and then uh, turn it over and uh, it should be open there's also another ribbon cable here that connects the uh, earphone jack so be very very gentle with it and at that point you could do whatever you want uh, maintenance upgrades whatever the case may be and that's it that's all I have to show you right now thanks for watching